What's up everybody and welcome back to Crankbaby ZXGG and today I'm going to be showing you how to download RetroArch and go through all the setup and today we're going to be getting the Nintendo. This is the original NES and I'm really excited to go back and check this out. This is something I haven't used in a long time and I haven't played any of these games in years. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to RetroArch.com all links will be in the description for everything that we need today. But first off, we go to RetroArch.com. We're going to come down here, click the download, and then scroll down a little bit. And we're going to see two options down here. One is Download Nightly, and the other one is Download Stable. We're going to want to get stable because Nightly is everything that's still in development. So we get the Download Stable. I'm not going to do this right now because I already have it. But once you click on this, you're going to be downloading RetroArch. And we are basically from here, we're going to come over to wherever you download it from. Mine goes straight into my downloads and you get something like this. Now it might be in a zip file. Just click on the zip file, extract to here, and you'll get this and you'll double click on that. Let it do its thing, say yes to it. Um, at some point, it is going to ask you if you want to download DirectX 9. Click the box next to it. Definitely do it. I mean, just in case, you might have DirectX 9 on this, but you may as well get it again just in case you don't because you are going to need an older version of DirectX to play some of these games. So once we're done doing that, you need to find out where it downloaded to or where you installed it to now for me i just put it on my c drive which is right here now for your first launch we're going to scroll all the way down till you see the icon of retro arc which is just here it's the application and then we're going to double click on that and that brings up retro arc let me just close that down now we're going to make this full screen now if you are using an xbox controller or a playstation controller it works immediately on this they've already got it set up but this is how it looks originally and i want to make this look nicer so we're going to just scroll down one to settings move over to drivers we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here to menu and then we're going to click on see it's on ozone right now we want to go to xmb we're going to click on that and then just close out of retro arc this basically is going to refresh it so now when we come back in it's going to look something like this which is a lot nicer it kind of reminds me of a playstation setup now you can see i already have some things on this and the next thing we're going to look at is how to load cores now cores is i guess their name for emulators and like i said we're going to be going to get the nintendo emulator today so we're just going to move down to load core and we want to come to download a core now it's finding us a list now here's some of the ones we already have amstrads and you know we're going to see a bunch of stuff down here let me just come down save us some time we're going to be looking for nintendo that's it so this is the nintendo nes famicom nestopia we're going to double click on that you can see it's downloading it's already installed at the bottom when you get this sort of hashtag here you know you have it and now we're going to just exit out again and then we're going to relaunch so now we have retro arc back up and now we're basically going to look at some other things and how to load our games into this. Now, what we want to do now is in the first one, we're going to come down to show desktop menu. And that's going to bring us to this. Now, this basically I'm going to click don't show again. I mean, you can read through that if you want. It pretty much tells you some of the things that you might want to click on to bring up maybe yeah, full screen F1 switch between full screen and Windows is F. Okay, I'm just going to click off that. Now we want to come into this box here. We're going to put on new playlist. For me, this is going to be Nintendo, but I'm just going to name it NES. I'm going to click OK on that. And then we're going to come into this box here. After we make sure NES is definitely highlighted, we're going to come back into this big middle box, right click, and then we're going to add folders. Now, this is basically where your games are saved. Now, 
I will be showing you where to get games from later on, but right now, mine is just in games. And I'm going to come into RetroArch, and we're going to click on NES, select folder. Now, in this for core, we need to go to Nestopia. And then for database, we want to be clicking on Nintendo Entertainment System. Click OK, and that's going to load in the games that I have. And of course, we're just going to close out again. Now, we want to close this all down again and then restart. Come back into RetroArch. Let's click on this. And now we should have an icon over here that has all of our games. Now, on any one of these, you can just click into them and then click Run. That's basically how we're going to do that. But before we go into that, there is still something else we want to do. And I'm going to show you how to get all the box art on the side of that, which just makes it look a little bit nicer. So you can see the box art to each game that you're looking at. Okay, so to get the box art, I've closed mine down again. I've refreshed it. And we are going to come down to this one. It's Online Updater. We're going to click on that. Come down to Playlist Thumbnail Updater going to click into this we of course want to go to NES because this is the one we're doing it for and you can see it's loading in all the games down at the bottom of the screen and we're going to come back out of this just pop this down we're going to come back out of this so we can refresh everything and then come back in So when we come back over here now, we should have all the box art coming down to the side. And you can see it just it just looks a lot nicer. It's a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to load a game now. I am going to come back into this. We're going to check out Contra. And we're going to go into this. And I, obviously, you just click on it, click Run, and it should bring it up no problem. Let's just see what this is like. Man, I haven't played this in years. Now, if you want to pause any of these games, you press F1 and it brings you to a screen like this. Now, of course, the very first thing is resume. If you want to restart your game, you can restart. This will give you the option to close down. You can also take screenshots. And, of course, you can save your game. If the game doesn't already have a save, you can save it here. And, I mean, there's a bunch of other things to do, like start recording. You can actually record in this. I've never done anything with streaming. I am going to quickly look to see... Let's go into options. Let's see what audio has, because that game was really loud. So maybe we come into this and... I'm not really sure which one it would be. There's a lot of different channels in that. Let's just check out the first one. I've already put that down to 40, so it clearly wasn't that. Let's pop that down. Let's just pop a bunch of these down. Man, those games were so loud. Let's just see if that does anything. I'm not really sure if it will or not. go in and maybe mess on with that a little bit more. Yeah. 
Okay, so I clearly suck at Contra and can't really play it again. But yeah, this this is pretty much how it all works. And of course, if you want to close down the game, you can just close down the content and it brings you back to this. And of course, you can go back into another game. I would always suggest saving first unless you don't like saving your content, which is just kind of crazy. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. If you like this video, please hit the like. Maybe share this around and of course subscribe to the channel to see some more. I've started today with the Nintendo. I think I'm going to probably get the Genesis or the Mega Drive as well. There was a bunch of cool games on that that I'd like to revisit. But I'm going to pretty much be getting all of them. Now sometimes you do need some other software to run some of these emulators. They don't just run as easy as this one. You need to go in and get BIOSes. And I'll show you everything that you're ever going to need to know. Anyway, guys, I'm Crankbabies at XGG, and I'll catch you guys next time.